In my Discord server for my patrons, I was asked if I could build a checklist using Apple Motion for Final Cut Pro. So today, that is exactly what we're gonna do. Also, if you are a patron, make sure you go and join me on the Discord server. Plus, you can download this project and use it in Final Cut Pro right now. First things first, open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut title and you can leave your presets and frame rates and duration at whatever you like, though I do recommend around 10 seconds for your duration. After that, we'll go ahead and push Open. In Motion, go ahead and select the title background and type text tier layers and just delete those. Going down to the bottom middle, we're going to select the Rectangle tool. Then we can click and drag and hold Shift so that it is perfect perfectly symmetrical. Make that whatever size you like, then we'll go to the inspector and disable the outline. Now you'll notice that the corners are pretty sharp, so we'll jump into the geometry settings and drag up the roundness. After that, we'll go back into the style settings. Now let's go ahead and add in our check mark. So I'm gonna come down and find the Bezier tool and we can just click to create a little check mark here. And at the end, I like to kind of round it off. So I'm gonna click and drag to do just that. Then we can push enter and you'll see we have this nice little check mark. However, everything is an even thickness all the way throughout it. And I kind of want it to come to a point. So to do that, we're gonna come on over to the left side and disable the fill. Then we'll come down to the outline settings and change the brush type from solid over to airbrush. You'll notice here that it kind of has these soft edges. So to adjust that, we're gonna need to locate our brush profile. Click on this down arrow and you'll see that it goes from a white gradient down to a black gradient. That indicates the opacity level on our brush stroke. Go ahead and click and drag on the black and just drag it completely off. That will fix the thickness on our brush stroke. Now we can go on up into our stroke settings and locate the width over stroke option. Clicking this down arrow, we should have this green line here. Find the right side and click and drag that down until you have a nice point on your check mark. Now we wanna animate this check mark drawing on. So let's go up to our behaviors, go down to shape and select right on. Currently, it's going to animate across the entire duration of our project, and we want it to be much faster than that. So let's go forward about 20 frames or so, and then we'll push O. That will set the out point and shorten our animation quite a bit. We can also change the speed from constant over to something like ease both to really give it a nice animation. After that, let's select the rectangle and go to our properties. We want to animate this popping in. So to achieve that, we'll find the scale property and click on this down arrow. We'll add a parameter behavior and select overshoot, and this is going to auto animate this rectangle for us. Let's go to that 20 frame mark again and push O to trim down the overshoot duration. Under our start value, let's change it from 0% to negative 100%. That means that we are negating the original 100% mark that this rectangle was at, thus setting it down to 0%. After that, we can go down and find the cycles. Currently, it is set to three. I want this to be a really nice, smooth, one-time animation, so we'll set that down to one. If we push play, we should have a nice little animation just like so. Now we wanna be able to adjust the coloring on the check mark and on the checkbox. However, if we have five items on our screen, we don't wanna to have to do it individually for each of those. So let's go ahead and create something that we can link to so that all the check marks and check boxes have the same color. We're gonna right click and create a new group, and we could just call this colorizer group. Then let's go to our library and locate our generators. In here, we'll find this color solid and just drag that into the colorizer group. I'm gonna disable the visibility on that and we can just rename one of these to be checkmark color. And then I'm gonna push command D to duplicate it and we can have another be checkbox color. After that, we can select our rectangle, go to the inspector, go down to shape and find the fill. In here, you'll see the fill color. Click on this down arrow, select add parameter behavior link then we can drag in the checkbox color into this link parameter. From there, we need to change the compatible parameters over to object, checkbox color, color, and all. So now you'll see that our rectangle is that blue color that we originally had on this checkbox color. Let's select that and change the color back over to white. From there, we're gonna do the exact same thing for our check mark. We'll select the Bezier line, find the brush color, click the down arrow, add a parameter behavior, link, drag the check mark color over into this window, compatible parameters, object, check mark color, color, and all. So now it is that blue color, we'll change it over to a nice red, just like so. 
Now we want to be able to change these colors later on in Final Cut Pro. So selecting the check mark color, we can go ahead and click this down arrow and select publish. Then we can select the check box color, click on this down arrow, select publish. Now we can go to our project settings, find the colors and we can rename these check mark color and then we can double click and select check box color. As we duplicate each of these groups, all of those colors are going to be linked to these two items, thus saving us a lot of time in Final Cut Pro. So now that we've created our checkbox, it's time to add in our text layers. Let's go ahead and collapse the colorizer group and I'm actually gonna lock that for right now. Selecting our group, we're gonna go ahead and select the text tool and we can click anywhere on the screen to add in a title. I'm just gonna put this as one, make a checklist. Then I'm gonna push escape to get out of the text editor. From there, we can scale it up to our liking and it's gonna be important that your alignment is set to this left hand side. Now we wanna make it so that wherever we move this title layer, the checkbox goes with it. So to achieve that, we're gonna select the Bezier layer and the rectangle layer. We're gonna right click and select group. Now these two entities are gonna to move together, but we will run into a problem a little bit later on with our animation because you'll notice that as the animation is playing out, our actual group box is shifting in scale. And this is gonna throw off some of our parameters later on. So to fix that, selecting this group, let's go ahead and check this box of fixed resolution under the group tab. Now you'll notice that our bounding box is way out here on the side. That is going to resolve any of those animation issues that we might have later on. Let's go ahead and rename this to be the checkbox group. After that, we'll go up to behaviors, we'll select basic motion, then select align two. Now what we can do is drag in this one make a checklist title into this align two well. You'll notice that our checkbox has moved over to where our title was. We want it to be on the left hand side. So to do that, we're gonna select the two parameter to be instead of center over on the left hand side. It's still not quite as far as we need it. So you'll notice there's this nice little handle right on our checkbox. Let's go ahead and just click and drag that over to the left hand side until we're happy with the positioning. But now what we have done is made it so that as we drag this text box around, the checkbox is moving along with it. I want this title to actually animate in. So to achieve that, let's select this title layer. We'll go up to behaviors, go to text basic, and we can select any one of these different animation presets that are set up for us. My personal favorite is arrange in. So if I push play, you'll see how all of the text layers are coming in really nicely. However, you might notice that our checkbox gets a little bit crazy here. So we need to go ahead and fix that. We'll jump inside our checkbox layer, select the align to and you'll notice this option at the bottom of ignore sequencing. By checking that, that is telling motion that we don't want this checkbox to actually animate with the text sliding all around because the position parameters are actually adjusting as the text layers are coming in. One other thing we should do is change the alignment from continuous over to fixed frame. We want this checkbox to be at the final position of this animation. So if we push play, you'll see now that our checkbox is staying perfectly in position and we have a really nice animation of our text layer. Let's go ahead and collapse this group and rename it to be checkbox one. Now that we've done that, we're going to select that checkbox and push Command D to duplicate it. Let's go ahead and adjust the text on this to be make a second item. Now we can select that layer and we can click and drag it down until it's in the proper position. All we need to do to make another one is select checkbox two. We'll push Command D to duplicate it, rename it to be checkbox three. We can jump inside and expand that. We can rename this. Then I'll push escape to back out of the text editor and drag this down so that we have a third layer. If we want to adjust the position of all three of these layers, we would need to expand each layer and push command to select the additional text layer. Then we can do that with number one here. And we can click and drag these into whatever position we want. I'm gonna go ahead and slide them over here to the left-hand side. What I want to be able to do in Final Cut Pro is enable or disable if each one of these layers has a check mark next to it and to be able to select how many check boxes are visible. To make a check mark toggleable in Final Cut Pro, let's scroll down to the very bottom group. We're gonna expand the checkbox layer and locate the Bezier line. Go on over to your properties and locate the opacity. Click on this down arrow, select add to rig, create new rig, and then select checkbox. I'm gonna rename this checkbox to be checkbox one. Then going over to the left-hand side, drag your opacity down to zero. 
that means that in this current state, motion is going to set the opacity down to 0%. So if I enable it, it will boost it back up to 100%. So now that we've done that, we need to do that for all the other layers. We'll go ahead and find checkbox two, find the Bezier line, locate opacity, click on this down arrow, add to rig. We'll go to the original rig, and then we're gonna select add to new checkbox. And you'll notice that motion has automatically added a two onto the checkbox name, which is really nice. We'll go ahead and drag that down to 0%, and we'll notice we can enable or disable this check mark. After that, we'll just do that for layer three. We'll find the opacity, add it to a rig, new checkbox, and we'll drag it down to 0%. Then we can go ahead and re-enable it. Now, we need to jump inside of each of these checkboxes, click on this down arrow and select publish, and that will give us the ability to use this in Final Cut Pro. Finally, let's go ahead and set up a rig so that we can enable how many different layers are visible. Select this rig and select pop up. From there, we can rename this snapshot to one and then we can go ahead and rename the other snapshots just to be two and three. Let's go ahead and rename this pop up to be checkboxes. Then we'll click on this pop up and set it over to one. From there, we'll locate this edit mode and select start. Now we'll scroll through and find each of these different groups that we want to work with. So we have checkbox three and we'll just drop the opacity on each layer. So checkbox three is down to 0%, then we'll locate checkbox two's group and drag that down to 0%. Now, one other really important factor is we wanna make it so that when these layers are invisible, they are not editable in Final Cut Pro. That makes it so that people don't accidentally click and drag on invisible layers. To do that, we'll go ahead and locate the text layer. We'll go into the text settings. We'll lower this window and find this parameter editable in Final Cut Pro. Go ahead and disable that. From there, we can select layer two and do the exact same thing, just disable editable in Final Cut Pro. After that, we can select stop rig edit mode and locate this rig that we've just created. You'll notice that those parameters have been added into this rig, which saves us a lot of time from needing to publish each parameter. After that, we can change it over to checkbox number two and we can go ahead and hide the opacity on layer three. We can also disable the editability on layer three. Then finally, you'll notice that with layer three, everything has been enabled. Finally, we need to come up to the top right, click on this down arrow and select publish. If we go into our project settings, we can see now that we have our checkmark colors enabled. We have checkbox one enabled, as well as two other checkboxes that we need to rename. And then we can also see the pop-up at the very bottom. Let's go ahead and rename this to be checkbox two and checkbox three. So now we can enable or disable these different check marks, but we can also change it over to just one layer or two layers or three layers. So now that we have set all of this up, we can push command S to save it and we can publish it over to Final Cut Pro. I'm just gonna call this checkboxes. And in our categories, we can throw it into whatever we like. I'm gonna throw it into my tutorials category and push publish. In Final Cut Pro, you can locate it under whatever category you threw it into. I'll just look up checkboxes and there it is. I'll drag that onto the timeline and I'll push play and you'll see that all of these animate in really, really nicely. We can of course adjust the color on each of these check marks and we can adjust it on the check boxes themselves. We can enable or disable if a check mark is there. And finally, we can enable how many different check boxes there are. Plus, if we click and drag on one, you'll notice how that check box slides around with it. And you'll notice that I can't click and drag on the invisible ones, which are right here. Now there is one last step that we wanna take to make sure that our animation stays the same because right now you'll see how that animation is really nice. But if I were to shorten this layer way down, the animation is going to be way faster. To fix that, let's jump back inside of motion. We'll just come down to the timeline. We'll go to the end of the animation and push Shift M, which will add this green marker. Double click on that marker and change the type from standard over to build in optional. Now we can push OK and push Command S. Jumping back into Final Cut Pro, we can go ahead and drag this layer down. The animation's looking really great. I can push Option right bracket to trim that down and the animation will stay the same. This is just telling motion how long the animation should be and what timing it should be. Otherwise, it's going to stretch the animation to the duration of your title in Final Cut Pro. 
If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button. Also, if you don't want to go through all the steps of creating this checkbox, you can go ahead and download it on Patreon right now. Plus, it's going to have some extra features to make your life that much easier. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.